You'll hey a duck. One of manual therapy's claims is that uh, the application of hands-on treatment reduces inefficiencies in the body or frees up energy. Assumedly, this means wasted energy, leaving us less capable of recovering and or living our lives fully. I've seen some criticism against this concept, and that's fair, honestly. I don't think this concept has been fully proven, and I'll stand by that. But modernly, we have this other concept called central sensitization. Now, this is the part where I say that what follows next is theory. Though I don't think it's a difficult leap to make, take that for what you will. In a very basic way, it's been well established that in central sensitization, areas of peripheral tissues, that's like the fascia of your appendages, for instance, or, or anywhere in the body, even small areas of these connective tissues, when they are immobile or degenerating, degenerated, they cause chronic small amounts of pain. And this might be noticed by the owner of those tissues, those fascias, or it might occur in a small enough amount to mostly go unnoticed, in fact. Now, we're going to set aside all the interesting science around pain and fibromyalgia and how this process is sustained by higher central nervous system regions. That's really cool stuff, totally worth looking up, but it's just not relevant to this particular conversation. So... In another very basic way, if there's an area of immobility in a tissue, even a small one, it is essentially sending out pain signals regularly, if not constantly. Kind of like uh, poking a sore spot on you all day. And this would be a nervous system irritant. We also know that in some cases, rare as it is, that there's, if there's enough time, these low-level C-fiber type pains created here will start to directly activate the sympathetic nervous system, activating the lateral gray horns, which is the spinal neural processing area for our sympathetic system. You may also notice this, notice this as the uh, fight or flight response, very commonly. Now, if there's immobility in small areas throughout the body, let's say, more than just one, a wider, wider reaching field, if you will. This is like your whole body is always in a little bit of pain. Regardless of whether there is direct activation of the sympathetic system or not, it's reasonable to think that this would be quite the irritant, quite an amount of stress on the body. And that stress is more than enough to activate our sympathetic nervous system in other ways, given enough time. When activated, that sympathetic system or fight or flight response tends to direct blood flow and the neural tone that controls that blood away from the digestive system, away from your capacity to achieve a restful state and to sleep, and to a, small, a smaller extent, away from your higher brain centers, those ones that give you the capacity for rational thought. Basically, this would describe a state of chronic stress. And it's not the only way to create chronic stress, but it is one of them. The potential long-term effects of chronic stress are wide-reaching and throughout the body. One could theorize, then, that reducing these points of immobility and degeneration would result in less stress over time, and certainly, this would not create an absence of stress in the body, but less of the total amount for sure. And were that the case, we might see a clearer head and decision-making process, which helps a person make better dietary and exercise choices, for instance. Those are pretty important things, by the way. Better nerve control and blood flow to that digestive system would likely also happen. And of course, improved sleep and recovery during that sleep time. So really, there is no freeing up of energy when it's looked at this way. Nothing is technically stored to be released. I mean, you could make a case for hormones and hormone cascades, but that's not the conversation for today. It's more in this case of where the body puts its emphasis in maintaining processes and tissues, and therefore organs, over time. So if there was a form of therapy that uh, could increase mobility 
and even better if it could also reduce sympathetic stimulation in general. I think that that treatment would often make the receiver of it feel as if they had more capacity to deal with their daily activities and challenges. More energy, you could almost say. Also, if you're holding on to a bunch of extra muscle tone that's unnecessary, getting rid of that would help too.